what's interesting in the way that artificial intelligence is often conceived is that we're training machines. So the whole idea of machine learning is that we have machines that are learning, they're being trained by being shown archives of millions and millions of images. And that's often where the analysis stops, particularly in the computer science fields. But what Trevor and I have been really interested in thinking about is once you've created these systems of seeing, this sort of predator vision as we've described it in, in previous work, what does that do to people? If you know that you are going to be assessed by a system that is recording your face and interviewing you, deciding whether or not you get a job, does it change the way that you emote? Does it change the way you express yourself? Does it change the words that you use? Say, for example, you've been invited to join a peaceful protest in your city. Do you go if you know that there are facial recognition cameras on every street post that are recording your face and inputting that into a centralized database that's used for policing? It may change your behavior. So in that way, we're starting to see the training of humans become part of this infrastructure of meaning that is represented by artificial intelligence. It's part of what we're trying to do here is really flip that way of thinking from how do we train machines to now how are the machines training us. In terms of the value extraction piece, that is something that underlies every single one of these systems. These systems are so expensive to produce and to maintain. They require like international networks of data and pipelines to actually even function at scale. So there's very few companies in the world who really do artificial intelligence at scale. In my account, we're really only looking at around 12 people who also, 12 companies rather, that own the pipelines to do this. So if you're looking at such a small group, you have to ask the question, what sort of value is being extracted by the system and for whom? So in many cases for state systems, you're talking about policing, you're talking about a form of like carceral logic. However, in, when we look at the corporate sector, you're thinking about the logics of advertising, you're thinking about the logics of prediction, and sometimes also you're thinking about the logics of a type of austerity politics. How can these systems reduce the number of humans that have to be employed to produce X, Y, or Z result? So these are the kinds of logics that I think we're really interested in surfacing through projects like this one. And so it's, and it's interesting in that sense, in the coming from an art perspective or looking at photography, we have a series of theoretical tools that we use to think about what the meaning of images is. You can use tools from semiotics or you can use kind of Roland Barthes ideas of how photographies kind of create meaning. One of the things that we're getting at with the idea of predator vision is thinking about almost a political economy of meaning making, right? In other words, who is reading images in what ways and how are the ways in which those images read guided by forms of power, whether those are market power or state logics. So thinking about, I think the best way, I, the way that I think about it really is like a, the political economy of meaning making, or the political economy of looking at photographs.